The other day I was talking to Einstein, and he told me that the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. In my naivete, I asked, Albert, what if there were no evil people? And to that he replied, by walking away. What he said actually got me thinking about how evil and how just downright bad can prevail when people are doing so much good to fight it. And quite accidentally, I stumbled on a frightening phenomenon called the bystander effect. Today, we're talking about the bystander effect. Before we begin, if you do enjoy this video, I urge you to hit the like button. It does help this little channel grow around the YouTube. And if you want to see videos every Monday, subscribe. And last but not least, let's have a discussion down below in the comments. What is the bystander effect? The bystander effect is a psychological phenomenon which dictates that individuals in a group who witness something harmful do nothing. And the more the bystanders, the less likely one is to intervene. Sounds counterintuitive, right? You would think the more the number, there is power in numbers, and so someone is more likely to do something. Or if no one did anything, someone would because of their morals. Well, there are notable cases which tell a different story. One of these is the 1964 murder of Kitty Genovese that popularized and caused research into the bystander effect and that most psychology students know. For those of us who aren't psychology students, here's what's happened. Late one night, Kitty is being stalked, and so she hurries home to her apartment. But once she reaches the courtyard of her complex, she gets stabbed through the windows of their apartments. 38 people just watched. Some accounts say 38, some go all the way up to 49. But all these people did was just watch. What's even crazier is that after the stalker stabbed her once, he left. Then he came back for a second time to stab her again. And then he left again and came back for a third time to stab her once more before leaving altogether. This happened over a 30 minute period and all these witnesses just watched. Someone eventually did call the authorities but only after two hours did an ambulance come and unfortunately she died from these wounds. Now you're telling yourselves that this was in 1964, that people changed from now or that it was dark at night or that there's conflicting information about the account, right? Well, here's another case. Two psychologists, John Darley and Biblatine, invited students from the NYU to take part in a study about adjusting to university life. Unbeknownst to them, they were actually investing a bystander effect. Each participant was put in a room with an intercom and told they were either listening to one other person, two other people, or five other people. These people were actually pre-recorded voices, but again, the participants didn't know that. Then a pre-recorded voice would pretend to have a stroke, and the psychologist timed how long it would take for a participant to call for help. Can you guess what happened? All participants who were in the group with only one other person on the intercom called for help and in an average time of one minute. On the other end, all participants who believed that they were in a group of five people, only 60% of them called for help, and that too in a time frame of three minutes. Now you're telling yourself that this was a lab experiment, that it lacks ecological validity, and that too was taken in 1968. So there's something up with it. How about something in the present day? Take the instance of Harvey Weinstein. I hate to say his name, but what about him? It was said that his behavior was an open secret among Hollywood. And yet, 
no one did anything for the longest time. Okay, so you're saying that that was Hollywood, that you're far removed from that situation, and that's just how Hollywood is so, so warped from the rest of the world. How about something closer to home? Ever witnessed someone being bullied? And you did nothing about it? Or when you were rubbernecking, passing by a car that was an accident or that needed help and you did nothing about it? Maybe you were on a bus and you arrived at the last stop and there was a person next to you sleeping, but you didn't wake them up. These are all examples of the bystander effect. A while back, I was walking down the road and I witnessed an individual littering profusely. I also witnessed three other people witnessing the same thing and noted the disgust in their face. And yet none of us did anything. I don't think we are bad people. And yet we didn't do anything. Why is that? Why does the bystander effect happen? One thing that happens is the diffusion of responsibility, where we find ourselves in a large group and we do nothing because we think someone else will. And so we are absolved of any personal responsibility. Or maybe the situation is ambiguous. Maybe we don't know if our help is warranted or even needed. And so this makes us uncertain and we do nothing. Maybe we see this group of bystanders and they are doing nothing. They are being totally passive. And so we decide to be passive because we are uncertain because you don't want to look foolish and you don't want to look like an outcast. There are countless reasons for why the bystander effect happens. And yet, we find individuals who fight, we find individuals who stand up and become active bystanders. So how can we be active bystanders? First off, for those of us who didn't know about the bystander effect, we are now conscious of it. And when we become bystanders, we should also become conscious of our actions. Not only can we act, but we can actually tell other people about the bystander effect and make everyone conscious about their actions and hopefully they can become active bystanders. Moreover, research has shown that even the addition of one active bystander turns the whole table and we're all more likely to partake and to help. When we think of social change, we think of individuals, of, of leaders who pushed for it. We think of Emmeline Pankhurst, of Nelson Mandela, Harvey Milk, and Martin Luther King. All these individuals stood up and fought for something, and others joined in. I know it's unrealistic and, and tough for, for one individual to fight, to undo all the bad in the world, but you should not underestimate your power as an individual. Your power is immense. I would like to read a passage from a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankl. It describes his, his experiences in concentration camps during World War II. The experiences of camp life show that man does have a choice of action. There were enough examples, often of a heroic nature, which proved that apathy could be overcome, irritability suppressed. Man can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom, of independence of mind, even in such terrible conditions of psychic and physical stress. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others giving away their last piece of bread they may have been few in number but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way and there were always choices to make. Every day, every hour offered the opportunity to make a decision, a decision which determined whether you would or would not submit. 
to those powers which threaten to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom. I'm going to challenge myself to speak up. And not only to speak up, but to act in the face of these injustices. And I urge you to do the same. One thing that happens. Oh my fucking god. Here you go. Wait. Your research has showed. Blah, 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 blah.